Since I always had a special interest in the moon and also have lots of videos on moon photography on my channel, let's kick off this very special video with a document you can see on the Hasselblad website and I'm just scrolling through a little bit. You see here, this is from September 1969 and it's about the first camera on the moon, which indeed came from Hasselblad. And there are lots of informations here. I can only recommend to look into that document and read it and go through it because you get a lot of details on that Apollo 11 mission, which was the one where mankind for the first time sets their feet on moon ground. And uh, you see here in particular in that article that NASA had chosen Hasselblad for space photography. That's something unique and uh, clearly that's the background of the camera I'm going to discuss. In this video, lots of photos here. The first footprint on the moon, which is famous and can be also found on special edition Omega watches, the lunar spaceship here and uh, the name clearly, the eagle has landed as you see it here. That was the phrase uh, Neil Armstrong sent back to Earth when the moon landing was a fact. Quite nice here, lots of material, lots of things to digest. But most importantly, it shows at the very end of the document some of these Hasselblad cameras which were used. So here, for instance, is a film back which was mounted on the camera body and is now replaced by a digital back. And you see it here in one of these footage photos from back then. And uh, here you see the typical setup of the same type of camera I'm going to introduce in this video. Beautiful cameras, a rich history, a very special event and the perfect moment to kick off the video. This is it. This is the first camera on the moon in its new modern version, like Hasselblad just brought it to market this year. And uh, if we open this up, it's a very nice packaging. So here we have the digital back. This is the actual camera body. And then there are accessories. So we are going to look at them now and also assemble the camera and also go for a first shooting, of course. So let's take out the digital bag first and let's have a look at that. It actually looks kind of very similar to what people might know from phase one. So my phase one IQ4 is about the same and uh, it has more weight than I expected. So it's not lightweight, I would say, but very, very compact. Here is the display, of course. So you shoot this most of the time at the waist level. And you just have certain positions here, which also lock in. You see this, another position, another position, but in general looks really good. Here seems to be a port. And uh, I guess here we have then, you know, the carts. So there are two card slots here. There is a battery compartment here, which is also nice. It's the same battery as for the X1D and the X1D Mark II. And actually the whole build if you look at this, it looks pretty solid, pretty good. I think I like what I see and what I have in my hands here. The next item in the box is the camera body. And for people not familiar with these type of cameras, it might come at a surprise to call this, let's say, very thin piece of technology here a camera body, but in fact, it is a camera body because you have the digital back sitting on one side and you have the lens on the other side and there's nothing between the lens and between the sensor, which is typical for these type of cameras. Looks also pretty nice if you look into that. Quite nice build. This metal finish here is very nice. Here is your tripod socket. Pretty cool. I think I like again what I'm seeing here. Let's see what else is in the box. So here is something else. I guess that's a manual. It at least looks like a manual. So here is a frame sticker and then you have all kinds of quick start guides. That's nice. And let's see what we have here. I guess this will be the charger. Of course, I already have a charger for these batteries because I own the X1D and the X1D Mark II. So this is basically the protection for the battery if you have to carry it. This is a shoulder strap here. Also quite nice. 
And what else do we have here? Then we have here, this is a cable. There's a USB cable here. Nice. That's it. Box is empty. And then we have here, so I was wrong with my charger. Here is actually the typical mobile charger from Hasselblad uh, with a USB connection here. So you can connect your USB cable and then it goes with a USB-C into the camera. And then here is something else. Let's see what that is. All kinds of cables and connectors. Uh, I might come back to them later because they clearly all fulfill a purpose here. So let's now assemble the camera into one piece. So let's start with the digital back. Here is the H4 Hasselblad and here is a button and that button needs to be pushed towards the H and then you can remove the protection from the sensor. So here's the sensor and the sensor is the same as in the Hasselblad X1D and X1D Mark II. It's a 50 megapixel sensor. According to DxO Mark, it's the best sensor currently available on the market. And uh, that is the first component. The second component is the camera body here. And this is actually very simple. There is some mechanism here where you can just push it down and then basically release the protector. And here, of course, you have the same as with the Hasselblad lenses on the X1D and X1D Mark II. You just lift it off. Then you have to assemble it here. So, and again, push that button until it firmly sits. And now the camera body is connected to the digital back. Now we take a lens from the XCD series. So this is the XCD 45 and uh, let's assemble this. And it's always the same with Hasselblad. If you have the red dot, the red dot needs to be at 12 o'clock. So let's lift this up. Let's put it at 12 o'clock. Let's rotate it until it firmly clicks. And that's it. That's the camera. How beautiful is that? Look at this wonderful piece of technology. Very, very nice. Now the way you hold this typically is like this. And of course you can also lift the LCD to use it as a waist level view on top of that LCD or you lift it up to 90 degrees and then you have the perfect view when you hold it at your waist level from the top. Looking around the camera, there are a few elements here. So here is something to hold basically the strap around your neck. It's on both sides, of course. So here you can connect a neck strap. And uh, here is something I'm going to cover in a moment where you can actually assemble some additional accessory to the camera. Here is a USB-C port. This can be used for tethered shooting or to charge the battery in the camera. You can also shoot the camera during charging. That's not a problem. So very convenient if you go for time lapses and one battery capacity is not enough for the number of shots you want to take. Just power it up during the shooting and then you will be fine. Here are the usual buttons. I will not explain them from scratch again because the buttons are exactly the same as on the X1D and X1D Mark II. And there is a video on my channel where I deep dive into these two cameras from the X1D camera series from Hasselblad. So you can look this up. I explain them in detail. Then here is another button which I'm going to cover in a moment. And here is the main button. This is the shutter release here. So half press and full press for actually taking the shot. And here's a control wheel which you can use to steer the aperture or steer the shutter speed. And actually if you're in manual mode and you use that button here, it toggles between aperture control via that control wheel here or shutter speed control via that control wheel here. The next element to note is actually at the bottom of the digital back. It's just here. And if you pull this off, you have here all kinds of connectors. So you have here one connector for a headphone, one connector for a microphone, and you have here flash in, flash out and ELX, which is typical for these Hasselblad cameras. And uh, that actually sits firmly at the bottom of the digital back. What's actually quite nice in a difference to what I'm used to from uh, phase one and their digital back IQ4 is, 
and uh, the various camera bodies they have. So the XF and XT, if you open this up here and look at the camera here, the camera body, there is some rubber sealing here and here, which you can feel with your finger. And uh, that should actually prevent dust and splash water to get into the camera if you shoot under, let's say, more challenging environmental conditions. I didn't find any hint whether this is really weather sealed, but that's actually quite nice. And since the XCD lenses also have a rubber sealing at the mount level, it should actually be resistant to splash water and dust. But as I said, I cannot guarantee this. What's also nice is how the battery compartment works. And people who watched X1D and X1D2 videos on my channel, they know that on the X1D and X1D Mark II, there's a release here. If we push this, it pushes the battery out, but it cannot accidentally drop. You have to give it another push and then you can release it. Simple like that. And here on the 907X, you have actually the same mechanism. If you mount the CFV2 and you look into the battery compartment, you have a battery release button here. If you push that, the battery just snaps out. Easy like that. So it's in the same way, let's say, a more sophisticated mechanism than what you typically have in DSLMs and DSLRs. Before we continue, let's quickly go back to this box with the spiral cables and the connectors. And uh, when I pulled them out before, sometime earlier in the video, I said I will come back to them. But all I have to say here is these are flash sync cables for in, out and an exposure cable and uh, to be connected to the camera. And that will be another tutorial, I guess, to explain the full meaning of these cables. So at this point in time, I will just stick to that little side remark here. Now, last night I did my first shooting in Zurich, late afternoon and then at night with this beautiful camera. And I must say the image quality has blown me away in the same way as I'm a big fan of the X1D and X1D Mark II sensors. And um, what I missed here is some auto exposure lock function. That is something which uh, I use very often in particular when like last night, I'm doing portraits and people photography besides some nightscapes, which I also did later than at the blue hour. And if I cannot segregate focus from light metering, that's a real problem for me. And here is where a very important accessory kicks in, which I'm going to unbox now and also to show how this is working on the camera, namely the hand grip with all the functional buttons. So this is the packaging of the hand grip or control grip. Let's have a look into it now, which uh, I will very likely frequently use with that camera. Looks quite nice, quite a poshy packaging here, like we saw it before. Let's try to get this out and let's have a look. So that's the hand grip. Here is a knob which helps you to securely mount it on the camera body. Here is a screw, which you can use to firmly screw it on. Here are the connectors to let the hand grip communicate via these connectors with the camera. Here you have a rear control wheel and a front control wheel is here in the same way as on the X1D and X1D Mark II. Here is your shutter button and release, half press, full push, half press, full push. And here are four other buttons, which basically enable the same functionality as was you what you have on the X1D camera. So quite nice. It also seems to be nice in hand. I'm going to mount this now on the camera and want to have a look how this is working for me. To mount the hand grip, you have to make sure we don't mess up the knob and the screw. And uh, this is easily done in the following way. Get the camera body, get the hand grip, place it on top, make sure the screw and the knob are matching and then just screw it firmly. And that's what I just did here. So that looks good. See the knob is securing its position and the screw is holding it firmly on the camera body. And uh, note here that this is sitting really on the camera body. It's not sitting on the digital back. It's on the body itself. So that works. And in this way, the camera is assembled. Now we have all the control here. I'm going to show this in a moment we need and we are used to from the X1D and the X1D Mark II. And you can also hold it in this way. It's quite nice. This is very stable. There is nothing to fear. You can just hold it in the way you would hold a normal camera. There are two more things to note on the hand grip. First of all, 
if you look at the hand grip from here, here is a joystick and it has four directions, actually all directions and you can also push it like a button. This is something new on X1D type cameras. This is not what we had on the X1D Mark II or the X1D. No joysticks, just the control wheels, rear, front, the buttons, no joystick. Here on this hand grip we have a joystick and I think also it's quite operable here. It looks really good and is very convenient. So you can basically use the joystick to control all kinds of things. I'm going to show this in a moment. The second thing to mention on the hand grip is portrait mode. And if you would not have that hand grip, holding the camera like this is very inconvenient at the waist level because if you have it at the waist level and you tilt your display, you have full control from the top looking at the camera. But what are you going to do if you want to do portrait orientation? And uh, that is not working with the hand grip now. That's working very, very nice. So you can do it in this way or you can do it in this way but then you have full control over portrait mode and without this control grip, I think a portrait mode shooting with that camera is really painful, if not impossible. The last accessory I wanna show for this camera is the optical viewfinder and that's this small box here. Let's see if we get this out. Wow, very poshy again, quite nice. Here we go, that's the optical viewfinder. And um, let's get this quickly out here. So this one here will be mounted on top of the um, camera body, again, which is uh, the uh, 907X, whereas the digital back's name, as I showed before, is the CFV Mark II 50C. And then here is the viewfinder. And it's really an optical viewfinder, an optical element. And uh, I will try to show in the camera in a moment. This has three frames, one for a focal length of 21 millimeter, one for a focal length of 30 millimeter, and then for 45 millimeters, all calculated for the medium format sensor we have in these cameras. And that optical viewfinder, of course, is also a very useful accessory and I can recommend buying this. Unfortunately, all the accessories for Hasselblad in the same way as people notice on my channel from Leica is painful for your wallet. So the hand grip is expensive, the optical viewfinder is expensive, even the batteries are not really cheap. So if you wanna enter the system, it is not a cheap pleasure. So the way you connect these two elements here is you look at the um, the side which slips into that port here and then you have to push the buttons here and just push it in firmly and then it's secured. So now it's ready to be mounted on the 907X camera body, which I'm going to do now. So let's take the camera body and let's get the digital back removed for a moment. So like this. And now you can here actually remove that plate with the Hasselblad logo and can push in instead that optical viewfinder here, which is very firm and secured then in it. So it's also sitting on the camera body. You see this here even better than before. The control grip as well as the optical viewfinder are sitting on the camera body, not on the digital back. And now we can mount this back and assemble the camera. Let's just click and that's it. And now I think the camera system is complete. So we have a beautiful optical viewfinder, we have a control grip and that makes the camera a bit more spacious of course, but also looks very nice, is a very eye-catching design and the functionality is just great. On the menu and the functions of the camera besides what I said on the mechanics and all these elements here, like the control grip, there is not much to say. If you just watch my video, which I posted as a comprehensive review of the X1D and X1D Mark II. Link will be down below in the info box. You will get everything to know what you need to know about that camera because it's exactly the same. You switch it on by pressing and holding that button and uh, it's as quick in booting up as the X1D Mark II. It does not have that lagging like the X1D. And then you have all the functions here in the same way as what you have on the X1D Mark II. 
You even have the intervalometer. By the way, there was a firmware update just came out some days ago, which I installed already on the X1D Mark II and it's the same on the 907X with the CFV Mark II. So you can actually do much more now with interval timer for time lapse. You have exposure bracketing here. You have focus bracketing, all these functions. What is nice is the joystick. So if you go into live view, you can now move your autofocus field with the joystick. And uh, I think you can see this here. Let's go to some dark areas because then you see it better. So quite nice in all directions. If you push it, it will go into magnification, but these buttons here, they are customizable in the menu system. If this is too big for you as an autofocus field, you can also customize this. Just go into the menu, go into focus, and then here is autofocus point size. You just go from large to let's say small, and this is a much smaller rectangle now and you can move it around. It also gives you more autofocus points, which is quite nice. So there are lots of things to say here to that camera, but since I have this comprehensive review already on the X1D and X1D Mark II, I will skip that part and come now directly to my shooting experience, showing sample images. And I should say I enjoyed that shooting last night in Zurich million times. It was fantastic going out with that camera. It's one of the best shooting experiences I've ever had and combined with that excellent sensor with 50 megapixels in that, I would say, absolutely special camera made really my day yesterday. So let's kick off with samples and shooting impressions. I don't wanna fall for you, oh no But you make it so hard Watching you dance all night, baby It's making me fall hard All in, I should say, Hasselblad modernized the first camera on the moon and it gave us a fantastic camera with fantastic image quality and probably the most beautiful camera going into 2021 and clearly the most special one. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and peace out.